And hello, friends, and so good to be with you again on this wonderful day. Uh, for those of you who may be watching this program for the first time or happen to catch it later on in the week, we want to tell you that Christian Connections comes up, comes up live or comes on live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So mark your calendar, tell a friend, join us when you can for the broadcast, for the live broadcast, or you can visit our website for repeating times uh, uh, during the week. Well, today we have a great program. It is month of December and a month where the whole world is celebrating Christmas. And for us, the essence of this celebration is Jesus. Amen. And we do it 12 months a year, not just in December, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we thank you all for being with us today. And uh, today we'll have a uh, Christmas season flavor in this program. Uh, Thank you to my colleagues, Dr. Gigi Nobel, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Marlon Paley, who never misses a broadcast unless he's given a day off. Uh, and it costs him the same. He gets paid zero either way, whether he's here or not, like the rest of everyone else. So we praise God for that uh, contribution that all of you given to, to this program. Uh, we have great guests with us. Uh, uh, my co-host will tell us who they have today, but my guest for the day is uh, Pastor John Anderson, a great man who not only comes to preach, he often, i got to tell you this, he often cooks something for us and bring it with him. Last week, he brought us uh, five pans of pizza and carried a microwave about that big so we can heat up the dinner and enjoy what we're eating. That's commitment, folks. And today, he brought that same big oven is it oven or microwave? Microwave. Microwave. I should buy a smaller one. Just enough for one slice of pizza at a time so they don't finish the pizza, right? <laughs> but thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that love you have toward the ministry and the team here at LLVN. It's my pleasure. What's your sermon about today? The sermon today is Born to Die. And it's focusing on the fact that uh, through the great love of God, Jesus came to this earth for where the express purpose of dying on the cross for, to pay for our sins and give us hope for eternal life. And it started with his birth. We're going to look at Bethlehem in a different way today. We we'll look forward to your sermon. Marlon, who's your guest today? Well, we're going to uh, talk about an amazing video uh, produced by the uh, music department of uh, La Sierra University. And uh, we have Jonathan Davison and uh, Julian Jensen. Or you're going to recognize Julian because he's been on LLBN a number of times before, uh, actually, uh, because he's a musician and aiding uh, others uh, perform. And I think, yeah, the performance yourself, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about the music department and we're going to show you this video. You're going to be amazed uh, at the quality of the work that uh, our institutions are doing uh, all in the name of, of Jesus Christ. So stay tuned for that. Uh, get him. And Gigi, do we have music? And who's our guest today for music? Yes, well, let me tell you, I am so excited because our guest for this evening, our musician, is, in my opinion, my humble opinion, one of the iconic Adventist musicians ever. Amen. And that is Donna Klein, and we are so blessed to be having music from her this evening. Amen, I say. Yes, Amen. indeed. And her first song, are we going into her first yes. song? Yes, we are. It is entitled... That's what Jesus means. You can take all my possessions All the things that men hold Dear, all the precious gifts that this old world can hold. But the love I found at Calvary far exceeds my fondest dreams. It's a love that can be bought by this world's gold then you ask me why i love him 
Why I choose to walk this way Well, I find his service sweeter Every day It's the only life worth living He has made my life complete Oh, that's what Jesus means to me Then each night around sundown, my children gather round. When the clouds of gloom and doubt would hover low. And then they whisper, Mom, we really love you. And my dad. Just seems so small. He has made our home a heaven here below. Then you ask me why I love him, why I choose to walk this way. Well, I find. It's the only life worth living. He has made my life complete. Oh, that's what Jesus means to me. Oh, yes, that's what Jesus means. Oh, Donna, I just love your voice. Okay. It's Thank so you. beautiful. Thank you. Soothing, relaxing. Thank you. The world really has known you for your organ playing, your keyboard playing. How long have you been doing that? <laughs> oh, maybe we shouldn't ask that. Or maybe. Since I used to say a hundred years, but people are starting to believe me. <laughs> so, how about 150? Oh, well, there we go, and you look terrific. And where has your music taken you? Everywhere. Different The Lord countries. has been so good. Um, my folks bought, um, neighbors owed my folks money. Mm -hmm. This is when I was about six, seven years old. Wow. And uh, they asked if they could play uh, pay for the debt with an organ or a TV and thankfully dad chose the organ <laughs> and I can play the TV but um, anyway so that began as soon as I sat down to the organ and my feet didn't touch the pedals but I could see this chord and it was in the black keys and so to this day I play in all the black keys wow. uh, unless I have to play in the white which I can but uh, mm -hmm. They say I was born the wrong color. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is but, fascinating. I yeah. love that story. You know, I told the, I never did re learn to read music. And never when I was ever. very small, I gave my heart to the Lord and I told Jesus that I would go and do and be anything for him if he would just use me. Wow. And, you know, from that time on, yes. I started hearing all these chords, all of these... <laughs> Uh, different chords in my head and wow. that's how I've always played. Is so yeah. any background though of any music no. theory? No. Uh, <laughs> so the Lord's really been very good. By. He's uh, he's used used me and I have joined the Kenneth Cox ministry. My husband and I uh, did uh, yes. back in 86, 1986. Wow. Fantastic. And um, lost my husband some years ago but I've continued on. Yes. With ministry. You know, I, I remember your husband Gordon and he was definitely your, your lifetime partner. Yeah. 
Moved right. the organ from sea to shining sea. <laughs> That's right. Yes, he did. He was very supportive of your music yeah. ministry, and I, I loved seeing the two of you. And we look forward to seeing him again yes. when we go to heaven. Yeah. Not long. Not long. It's so true. But, you know, it's, it's been the organ for all these years, and for the past few years, we see you sing, and well, that's so wonderful. So how did that come about? That was kind of fluky. The <laughs> Lord has a sense of humor because he dumped me right out on live TV the first time I had sung. Well, I'd always sung with my family, but when it came to uh, yes. really in public, I didn't really do a lot of solos. I could always hide behind the organ, oh. you know, and I, I enjoyed doing that. But I was music coordinator for the Give Me the Bible series with Pastor oh. Cox. And so I would get the music. Well, I one night especially, the music couldn't be there, and there I was. I was it. Absolutely. And so, like I say, the Lord has a sense of humor. But, uh, a, you know, I, I claim the text, Jeremiah 1, 4 to 9, it's mm -hmm. the Lord told Jeremiah he was going to go for him, and Jeremiah said, I can't, I can You know, so I really identified with Jeremiah, but the Lord said, you'll go, I'll put the words in your mouth, and you will not be afraid of their faces. And that, isn't that stage fright? Isn't that what yeah. that? Well, but you so, seemed so comfortable Lord, up there that you were well, meant to I play thank the Lord for this. as well as so, sing. And I'm glad you. you're using all talents for thank the Lord you. because thank we are you. blessed by all the music that you always bring to well, us. Well, thanks for asking me. So thank you for being here this evening. Well, thank you so much. Great interview, great music, as you know. Marlon? Yes, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, uh, in the light gray suit, you will recognize uh, Julian Jensen as a musician extraordinaire, and uh, next to him, in the uh, darker gray suit, well, Jonathan Davidson. And uh, Jonathan, you're with uh, Lassie Uni University, the, the School of Music Department. Tell us about that. What, what, what? Well, you're close. I'm actually in the advancement office. But the yeah. reason I got involved with the department of Office next door to the yes, yeah. School of Music. <laughs> but I got involved with them because th for a long time they had wanted to do a music video. And my coworker and I have a background in film production. And so one day we so told them, uh, have you ever thought about doing a music video? And they said, oh, we would love to. So, mm. wow. so tell us about your background. I mean, video production. And how come you're not volunteering for LLBN? Oh, hey, that. <laughs> well, no one's asked me to, so that would be a good start. Yeah, yeah. Okay. the contract. Um, well, uh, I actually, I started at La Sierra in a, in a business degree in 2008. Yeah. And when I finished that, they asked me to come and work for the university. And because I worked there, um, I started taking writing classes, because I always loved to write. And when I ran out of those, I noticed that they started a film school. So I started taking classes there and fell in love with the whole process. So uh, that's how I, I fell into the film production side of things. So you came to La Sierra in what year? Uh, 2008. 2008, so you've always been a creative guy you know, since your early, early days? Yeah, sort of. I started um, writing my first novel when I was like 14 mm -hmm. and uh, I just discovered that I, I loved the process, so ever since then I've either been writing or, or making films. Well, tell us about your walk with Jesus. When did you meet him and, and decide to follow him? Well, I actually remember that very distinctly, because um, I grew up in an Adventist family, and well, it was always it went along, yeah. and, but uh, the first time I really felt like it became my religion was uh, I was laying on a couch in Hawaii and I was reading uh, Steps to Christ because I'd never read it. I think I was about 13 or 14. Yeah. And uh, in that moment, it was kind of odd, and I think it kind of links with your sermon, for the first time I realized that I was going to die someday and that the universe and my family and everything would go on without me. And that just made me realize I need to, I need to take life more seriously. And as I was reading uh, Steps to Christ, I just said, uh, Felt a very strong connection. I thought this is this yeah. is it. Never look back. Never look back. No. Never got attracted by the sparkly lights of Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Only been there a couple times, and I, I looked down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking. Yeah. So. Julian. Yes. How many types of instruments uh, do you play? 
Uh, well, one. That would be the piano. Yeah. So you, you, you <laughs> I, just kind I, of focused in on that piano and developed yeah, this. Um, I don't fancy myself much of an organist, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I do, I do enjoy the, playing it the on the pros. side, but um, I leave that to the much more uh, well-versed, it builds much more versed in the craft. But I've devoted my life mostly to the piano, and that's partially because my father was a pianist and his uh, mother also. So it kind of, you know, was an inevitable part of my life. Professionally, your, your uh, grandmother my, and... my grandmother taught piano uh, for many years in India. She was... Um, a missionary along with her husband um, who was a, a scholar and a theologian so and, and a pastor so. yeah, there's, there's a big story behind that yeah but that's a, that's an entirely different uh, that's another visit here to <laughs> another yeah. time perhaps but yeah she she was kind of my first piano teacher when I was about four and my dad um, sort of took over when I was old enough to play more than twinkle twinkle <laughs> but um, I've never forgotten their influence, and um, they're still my biggest fans. And I, you know, I, I thank the Lord that I came into this world with such a supportive family, um, who wanted me to be able to pursue my dreams and pursue that which mm -hmm. gave me fulfillment. And um, so, yeah, that's how I started, I suppose. So, w what is your favorite, country or western? <laughs> style of music that is. Um, that's that's a tough one. <laughs> what, what do you like to play most? Okay, so what I like to play most um, is how about this non-answer? Music that makes people happy. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to play most. Music that inspires people and makes them feel uh, the presence of God in their lives. That's the music that uh, I like to play the most, yeah. whether that's classical or, you know, hymns. Or, you know, I, I, I try to be I try to be all encompassing. Even though my personal favorite, of course, is classical, as mm -hmm. one who's grown up with that style. Do you like to play for the Heritage Singers? If that if the job opportunity opens, <laughs> I'll be yeah. available. <laughs> so, what did you have to do with this video? Well, um, I was approached by Loveland Razook, who's uh, the the one running the show of the music department in La Sierra, um, asking if I wanted to be involved. And um, I initially thought, okay, I, there weren't much details given. Mm -hmm. Then they said, okay, here's the music. I want you to play piano and also to record some percussion for it. I said, okay. And I had no idea we would be, we would be going up to the mountains um, until well into the production, um, close to when we recorded the sound first and then went up to yeah. Mammoth, um, I think in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just an incredible experience from the get-go. Um, Spectacular, wasn't it? Well, yes, but I think beyond the spectacle, I, I think the heart of the of the project was we want to tell a story. Um, I think Jonathan um, made that clear from the beginning. We wanted to tell a story that matters and mm -hmm. one that all people need to hear that a savior is born, you know. Mm -hmm. And that, that I think is the reason why this video resonates with so many people um, who have seen it online. And, well, let's, let's yeah. just take a moment now and uh, take a look at this video. Yeah. <laughs>
What a fabulous way to enter the season of Christ's birth. That's what we celebrate mm -hmm. as Christmas mm -hmm. from La Sierra University and the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Um, just a great, great work, you guys. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So there, there, tell me about those uh, singers. Uh, three of them are cousins. So that's and why they uh, harmonize so well together. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're going to look forward to more work from you and uh, also your volunteer application scan. Do you think you have that handy? Or it does size seal and we've got a thumbprint <laughs> as well, personally. Mm -hmm. Oh, so glad to have such talents yeah. visiting here with us at LV and, and gifting us with such, such beautiful material, Thank you. which you will be playing on LV and again throughout the season. Great. Thank you. So, thank you very much for that, that yes. gift. That's uh, uh, Thank you very much. Perfect, perfect. This is, this is why we celebrate Christmas, you know, and Jesus and his birth. Uh, whenever it happened, that's the reason for this. Yeah. Well, speaking of good music, yeah. I believe we have another piece, don't we? Yes, we do. And... Before Donna will sing to us, I would love for her to share the background behind the song, who wrote it, why it was written. Donna. Well, this is a hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the song I wrote, um, it was during my husband's illness, and um, which he, when he passed away, I wrote a song called Do It Now. If you have a song to sing, Sing it now. If you have someone you love, tell them now. So, do it now. Slipping by Life is full of changes Good and bad I've had a lot of happiness I've cried a lot of tears But looking back I can see all the blessings I've had This one thing I know Life's very short Like a shadow So quickly it's gone So whatever is left to do For right now is all the time there may be If you have a work to do, do it now If you have a song to sing, sing it now there is no more yesterday, tomorrow may not come. 
come your way as the moments slip away do it now if you have someone you love tell them now if you have sweet words to say say them now there is no more yesterday tomorrow may not come your way you may not see another day do it now let the friends around you know the love you have before they go the love of Jesus to them show tell them now right now do we Folks, we're fortunate to have with us again our, our regular friend, Pastor John Anderson, who's the senior pastor for the Mento and Seven Day Adventist Church, to bless us with today's message. Pastor? Thank you, Adam. It's a pleasure all, always to be with you here, and uh, I'd like to open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, during this season, when we are reminded of Jesus' birth, we pray that just as he was born in Bethlehem, he'll be born in our hearts that we'll live to serve him and look forward to his soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the message today is Born to Die. And we're thinking about Jesus' birth at this time of year. Uh, to clarify just a few things. Uh, there's a common misconception having to do with the wise men visiting. And we talk about three wise men. We don't know that there were three. We know that there were three gifts that the Bible mentions, but we don't know how many wise men uh, were actually present. Uh, many times you'll see artist renditions that will show the wise men and the shepherds visiting at the same time. That probably was not the way it happened. The shepherds visited Jesus uh, immediately when the angels sang when he was still there in the temporary quarters, whereas the wise men, it says, when they came, they visited Jesus in a house. So those are some misconceptions. Also, the, the, the date, December 25, uh, we believe that probably wasn't the date of Jesus' birth. Uh, more than likely, it was in the fall of the year. It mentions that the shepherds were out in their fields uh, keeping watch over their flocks, which they probably would not be doing in the dead of winter. Uh, however, this is the time of year when the world looks back at the birth of Jesus, and so it would be a shame not to acknowledge it and take advantage uh, of that of that uh, focus. So we're going to talk about Jesus and his birth in the context of born to die. The coming of Jesus to this earth became a necessity when sin entered the picture. As soon as Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, then that triggered a series of events which resulted ultimately in Jesus dying on the cross. As soon as there was sin, there was a savior. It was a reality in the mind of God from eternity. It was a necessity as soon as Adam ate the fruit, and it became history when Jesus died on the cross. The Bible says that he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Even though we may not be able to comprehend all there is to know about the wonderful plan of salvation, uh, I would like to invite you to consider uh, a few things regarding this great uh, mystery, this great miracle that took place. Because that's what Bethlehem is all about. God's love for you and me to save us in his kingdom. But there was a big challenge. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, they broke a law that was of divine origin. That means that they could not make up for their mistake. That means that an angel couldn't atone for their transgression. The sacrifice that had to be made in order to achieve salvation had to be a divine sacrifice. 
But then that uh, presents somewhat of a problem because if it was to be a divine sacrifice to atone for humanity's sin, that meant that God would have to die. Now, it's true that with God, all things are possible, and, and uh, these problems aren't big to his way of thinking, but for us to try to grasp exactly how this was going to work, uh, it, it uh, provokes our mind in areas that uh, may be unfamiliar to us. But think about this. The Bible says that regarding the nature of God, in him was life. Now, when we talk about ourselves, we can speak about being alive and having a life, but that's a different thing than what the Bible says about God. It says by his very nature, he is life. And that means that deity cannot die. So here we have, have a paradox, a conundrum, a divine law being broken, requiring a divine sacrifice, and yet the fact that deity cannot die. So how would God solve that problem? And it was through what we call the incarnation, God himself becoming human and in that way accomplishing the goal of salvation to die for our sins. In the second chapter of Daniel, we have the story of the king and his forgotten dream. And much of that chapter is devoted when we talk about it to the, the uh, statue and the different components of metal that represent different nations. But there's one part of it that I, uh, I particularly like. And I'm going to read from Daniel chapter 2 and verse 11. And after I, after I read this passage, I'm going to make a comment that will seem uh, contradictory or paradoxical. But uh, uh, follow along. The king said to his wise men, you have to tell me what the dream means. And they said, okay, king, you tell us the dream, and then we will tell you what it means. And he said, well, that's the problem. I can't, I can't recall it. I don't know what it was. And they said, well, if you can't tell us what it is, then how are we going to uh, tell you what it means? So they went back and forth on this for a little bit. And finally, the king said that uh, you, you have to tell me the dream or else uh, your, your life is going to be in jeopardy. So they said, I'm reading now Daniel 2, verse 11. It is a difficult thing that the king requires, and there is no other who can, who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, that was the wisdom of the Magi back in Babylon. And they were right. But they were wrong. In what, were they, in what way were they right? Well, it is true that such a secret as the forgotten dream of the king could not be revealed except it be of divine origin. It is true that they said there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods. That was true. But the last part of the verse, when they continued, was so wrong. Because they said, whose dwelling is not with flesh. And that contradicts the whole plan of salvation and uh, un undercuts exactly what God was trying to accomplish. Have that phrase in your mind as I read another passage. They said, whose dwelling is not with flesh. And I'm going to read another passage from the New Testament, John chapter 1. Verses 1 through 3 and verse 14. See how the wisdom of, of the scriptures refutes the wisdom of Babylon. John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So you have Daniel 2.11, the wisdom of Babylon that says, gods don't dwell here. They, their dwelling is not with flesh. But then you have the, the account of the Gospel of John that says, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that was the miracle of Bethlehem. We can't explain how it was that humanity and divinity combined in the birth that took place, but we can accept that it happened. And that was an event that changed all history. We call this the year 2017. Where did that number come from? It came from the time when Jesus was born. And almost all the world acknowledges that event in that way. What I want to share with you is that the prospect, the goal of Jesus' death was something that, that accompanied him from the very beginning in Bethlehem all the way through his life. I'm going to leave the Bethlehem part till last. But at the time when he was dedicated in the temple, uh, 40 days after his birth, he, he went there and Simeon was in the temple. He had prayed that, that uh, he, he would be able to see the Messiah before he passed away. And the Holy Spirit revealed to him when Mary and Joseph came and carrying the infant Jesus that he was the one. 
Now, when, whenever you would see an infant of a month old or so, you would probably go up and greet the parents and tell them what a wonderful child that is, how beautiful it is, and what a wonderful life he's going to have, and so on. But that's not exactly what Simeon said. If you read in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 34 uh, and 35, what he said was a, a, a foretaste of what Jesus' life was going to be, including the cross. He said to Mary, a sword is going to pierce your heart also. Now, that would not be normally something you would say to parents holding a month-old infant, but it was the shadow of the cross. It was the ultimate goal of his life. He was born to die. The shadow of the cross was there at the temple that day when Jesus visited when he was about 12 years old. And when he observed the services and when he saw the sacrifice of that lamb, the Holy Spirit impressed his mind that that pictured his destiny. That lamb represented him. And that was reinforced at the time of his baptism when his, his uh, second cousin John said, Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I wonder how many people who heard that statement by John the Baptist had any inkling of the significance of that. And for 4,000 years they had been sacrificing animals and now here standing before them in their very midst was the one uh, to whom all of those illustrations pointed. The shadow of the cross was there um, on the Mount of Transfiguration when he met with Moses and Elijah and it says that they talked about his decease which he should accomplish. Usually you don't think about death being an accomplishment. Usually death is an enemy, something we don't even want to talk about. But in the case of Jesus, it was an accomplishment. That was the express purpose for his coming here. At least three different times he referred to his death. And in the 12th chapter of John, we have Jesus' prayer to his father. John chapter 12 and verse 27. Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I came to this hour. That was the express purpose of Christ's life, was to give his, his life existence, his blood on the cross, in order to accomplish our salvation. He was born to die. And of course, the shadow of the cross hung heavy there in Gethsemane when he under such great stress, he exuded drops of blood and would have, would have died were it not for the strengthening of an angel who came to uh, give him the ability to press on further in the torturous experience through which he went. But let's go back to Bethlehem for a minute. And uh, if you have your uh, spiritual eyeglasses on, uh, take a look at that story in Bethlehem and see if you can't see the story of Calvary in Bethlehem. See if you can't see the cross attached to the crib. Where was Jesus born? Well, uh, they ended up in Bethlehem because of a uh, requirement that had been issued by Caesar Augustus that, that everyone had to go to their hometown to be registered. And so that was the reason that Joseph and Mary traveled south to Bethlehem. But when they got there, they found that the place was so crowded that all the hotel rooms were already taken. And uh, so they found temporary quarters uh, in, in a barn, in a stable. Now, what the artists have uh, pictured for us there is, is uh, perhaps some sort of a freestanding dwelling, but that probably is not really what that was. As a matter of fact, if you go to the, uh, the Holy Land and you go to the Church of the Nativity that is, was built in the 4th century to um, honor the birthplace of Jesus, you'll see that it's built over a cave. It was a cave in which Jesus was born. And if you can see that as a representation of, of the tomb in which he was laid. Secondly, he was put into a, uh, what the Bible calls a manger. Now again, the artists may have a, a nativity scene that uh, uh, features some uh, slats of wood that are positioned together so they could hold hay. Uh, but that's probably not what it was back then. It was probably a, a rock that was hewn out uh, in order for the, the hay, the straw, or whatever the animal feed was to be placed. And that's where Jesus was put. Well, again, if you have your spiritual eyeglasses on, look at that and see if you can't see the, the crypt in which he was played, the sepulcher in which he ended his life. As it was in Bethlehem, so it was at Calvary. And what about the clothes that he wore? The Bible says that he wore uh, what are called swaddling clothes. 
And um, those that study these things say that it was customary, if you were traveling some distance, that uh, you would carry along with you your burial clothes in case, uh, heaven forbid, your life would come to an end, that you would have your burial clothes with us. And many scholars feel that, the, that Joseph's um, traveling burial clothes that he brought with him became the swaddling clothes that Jesus uh, was put in as he was born. And finally, point number four, the gifts that came when the wise men visited. Uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, we're told that at Jesus' death, there were spices that were brought as well as myrrh to uh, embalm his body when he died. So think about Bethlehem through that lens for just a minute. The cave in which he was born, the tomb in which he was buried, the crib in which he was placed, the sepulcher in which he was laid, the clothes that he wore that were Joseph's burial clothes and the gifts that uh, later were used to embalm his body. He was born to die. He came here for the express purpose to give his life so that you and I could be saved. So when we think about Christmas, it's not about the toys and the trinkets. It's about the gift above all gifts that God gave for God so loved the world that he gave. It's not about the tree that you hang your ornaments on. It's about the tree that the Savior hung on. So today we acknowledge, we praise the Lord for this wonderful gift of salvation that gives us hope today and gives us the expectation that soon this Jesus who was born in humility will come back in glory and take us home. May that day be very soon is my prayer. Come back and join us, Pastor. Great sermon. Great sermon. Thank you for sharing that message with us. Thank you. To remind us of what Christmas is about. It's what really, Christmas is about. It's, it's, it's about the Lord himself. About the Lord himself. You know, it's interesting. Uh, when you talk about uh, Adam and Eve sin, many of God's critics will say, oh, how harsh God was on Adam and Eve. But in reality, he offered them forgiveness through his son right there. They broke they broke the jar, mm -hmm. the glass jar, for, for lack of analogies, and God was going to fix it for them mm -hmm. by sacrificing his own son. I mean, if that isn't love, if that isn't forgiveness, then I don't know what is. Yeah. We often look at the negative side when people look at Adam and Eve. Well, God wanted to destroy mankind. On the contrary, God is restoring mankind through Jesus. When they sinned, had Jesus not interposed his life at that point, they would have died immediately. That's right. But it was because he pledged his life, which was always in, in the heart of God to do. Should there be uh, sin arise, that this plan would be put into operation. And that's why the Bible says he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And um, it's a ma miraculous, miraculous story. Just like the, product, the uh, sheep that was lost, uh, God came in search of lost humanity. That shows his love, too. If God had not come in looking for them, it never would have happened. But he That's did. That's the truth. God is provisions. just so full of love and gifts. You know, gift, mm -hmm. gives us the gift of the Spirit, the gift of forgiving us for what we have done, and continue to forgive us mm -hmm. nonstop. I mean, where would you get such credit card <laughs> <laughs> transactionally on earth where you can just buy and buy and, and, and someone else paying the debt on it? Jesus gave us that unlimited forgiveness and uh, and then he bur you know he came as a child as well, that was another big gift he left his kingdom to become a son of a poor family who was going to live through struggle living as a poor man who's ministering and then he dies on the cross another gift to give us the resurrection mm -hmm. and prove to us that we can also be resurrected like him Amen. and then the final gift the second coming where we can be part of his eternal kingdom I mean, to me, that's Christmas. Yeah, and when you all think, throughout the year, when you think about uh, the comparison and contrast, uh, Adam was was in the perfection, physically, intellectually, in all aspects, and yet they they slipped, they missed, they sinned, they made a mistake. When Jesus was born, it was after four thousand years of the human race declining in in uh, physical and moral right. moral strength, and he came as a baby, as you, as you say. Adam was an adult with all the advantages. Jesus was born as an infant and had to learn to walk and crawl and all these things. That's an amazing thing that the Creator had to learn to walk and talk. Isn't that the truth? And was subjected to all earth 
problems. Mm -hmm. Adam was given, he was given a perfect life mm -hmm. if he would have just been able to sustain it. But Jesus faced all the sins on earth and overcome them all. Amen. And overcome them all. Yeah. Gentlemen, if I may just quickly right. ask you, I mean, here we go, you, for Christmas, you planned this beautiful music piece that we saw today. That's, to me, that's, that's another gift of Christmas, you know, a true gift that is not selfish, but it's selfless. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to do this? Well, we, we've actually for years been watching these incredible music videos that Brigham Young University has been doing with their student musicians. And every time we saw one, we thought, you know, our, our music students could do this too. And so uh, that's what God is thinking about uh, doing music video. That's wonderful. The Lord spoke through your heart to, to create this video that's going to be shown to millions of people, I'm sure, over time. So uh, here's the nice. gift of Christmas again. Uh, Gigi, what's, what's Christmas to you? What, what, what is it about? Christmas to me is just celebrating Christ. In, in my life, in my heart, and spreading his love to every single person I come into contact with. So Christmas is not just a day. That's beautiful. It's, it's a practice, it's a lifestyle, because he died to, to save us, and that's incredible love. And there's a song that Sandy Patty sings called The Gift Goes On, and I really want to be able to pass that on daily, whether it be to my students or patients, clients, family members. And that's what good Christianity is all about. Yeah. Well, well answered. Well, on that note, let's yes. see what else we have for music. We have another beautiful song by Donna, and it is called Just In Time. Just when I start to feel discouraged As the cares of life grow heavy on my mind Just when I start to wonder if it's worth it anymore I get a little glimpse of heaven just in time, just in time, just in time, once again the water turns to wine. Just around the time I just can't take it anymore I get a little glimpse of heaven Just in time Just when my faith begins to weaken When my strength has been taken by the miles Just when I am sure that I'm too weary for the climb I get a little glimpse of heaven just in time, just in time, just in time, once again the water turns to Just around the time I just can't take it anymore I get a little glimpse of heaven Just in time 
Like a sweet rain falling on the desert Like a cool refreshing breeze in July And just around the time I just can't take it anymore I get a little glimpse of heaven just in time and then around the time I just can't take it anymore I get a little glimpse of heaven just in time Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, folks, uh, LOBN, it's always been a gift to our viewers throughout the world and it's been made possible by your generosity. But we have another gift we always offer on on the weekly programs, and that's the gift of prayer. Marlon, what could folks do if they know someone who's lonely during the season and needs to pray with someone, or if themselves need to pray with someone? What could LLBN offer? Well, they can uh, go to the website or just uh, right from the bottom of the TV and check out the prayer line. Uh, we have it staffed with prayer for professionals that uh, are available for most of the time of the day. Uh, I think the prayer line is open through uh, this program. And so, you know, even if you have some good news you want to share, well, you know, you can resource with the prayer line, but it's also there to support you when you know, you're just not feeling very good because the world has kicked you once, once too many for the day. You know, Jesus is here to help you and he's provided people to give you that support. So take advantage of this free service and great blessing. Uh, you'll be be blessed by the people you talk to, and you're going to be blessed uh, just by uh, experiencing for yourself. Get them? Wonderful. And folks, believe me, there are no gimmicks, no sales, no catch at all. You call that line, it's totally free to you to pray with someone, and that's it. That's where it ends, right there. So uh, take advantage of it. Uh, the toll-free number is on the bottom of the screen. And we also ask you to tell a friend to follow us uh, through social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. We're available on all these services for live broadcasting as well as links to many uh, uh, VODs, Video on Demand videos. Gigi? Yes, sir. How can people help us during this season? Oh, during this season, they can provide their donations. And should I say the $150? That's Is right. that still apply? And explain why it's $150. Okay, so $150, get this. That provides for eight of the LOBN channels, all of the eight channels. It provides one hour of telecast. Wow. And so that really makes a big difference. And we would really appreciate it if you would give your gift of love to LOBN so that their ministry can continue on all throughout the world. $150 an hour will take mm -hmm. the message of Jesus throughout the world yes. in five foreign languages and three English channels. That is a miracle, isn't it? it? Is. That is a blessing. Pastor, this, it can only be possible through God's blessings. Well, my conviction is that all technology and all these things were provided by God to spread the gospel. Satan has come in and tried to abuse those through means that go the other direction, but they are there and available so that the, the prophecy can be fulfilled. This gospel will go to the entire world and then the end will come. So I think it's an unbelievable opportunity to share the love of Jesus through LLBN and other media ministry to spread the word. Amen. So the wars and rumors of wars and the hate and the famines, all that's going to always be there. It's always going to happen. But the last sign that Jesus promised before his final coming is gospel the gospel shall be preached to all nations. Yes. Wow. And we are part of it. Your video yes. and LLBN and your church streaming and your music. 
Praise God. We are living during the times that Jesus is preparing to come back and proclaim his people forever and ever. Imagine, living forever and ever. I won't lose hair again. I'm not going to be worried about losing hair again. I'm looking forward to that opportunity. And I get to learn to sing like you, perhaps, and speak like Gigi, and be as tall as John Anderson. <laughs>